Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our human game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and well because it's close to Christmas I thought we'd start an occasional series looking at uh, some of my games uh, mainly from uh, from my bullet adventures on Lee Chess. Um, funnily enough I got asked uh, by Mr Beads on the Mastodon whether um, you know, Leela's, whether I was remembering all the uh, unusual mating patterns that we're seeing in Leela's tactical games and, uh, yeah, whether they were influencing my own play. And uh, I said, well, you know, I sort of do hope that um, they're sort of kind of more or less going in automatically to my brain. Normally tactics are like that. I mean, endings, I normally need to work quite hard to uh, to uh, to internalize them. But tactics, normally it's going automatically. And, uh, well, then I played this game today and I just thought, well... Surely I must have picked this up from Leela somehow because these mating patterns are quite extreme. So let's have a look at this game. It's a great little game, I have to say. So I started off with 1b4, very common Leela opening with uh, knight odds, the knight on b1 missing. So I've seen quite a few games recently, so uh, sort of influenced me. Knight f6, bishop b2, e6. Yeah, and the bishop's um, attacking the pawn on b4. Without the knight on b1, Leela's always meeting this with rook b1. And uh, if bishop b4, we take on f6 and uh, and the rook attacks the pawn on b4. And then later the bishop drops back to a1. Um, somehow I've got to play a little bit slower with um, <laughs> with uh, a knight on b1 still. So a3, bishop b7, and then I went g4. After all, Leela's often playing g4. I mean, these sort of combinations of a bishop on the long diagonal and g4 is one of Leela's standard patterns for, um, for uh, um, yeah, just messing up the position, really. And the idea is not not really to, um, to win a pawn back on g7 afterwards, but just to sacrifice the pawn. Actually, I've got to be a little bit careful here because after knight g4, black's got ideas like bishop h4 here. So I, I certainly wouldn't be taking on g7. I mean, bishop h4 might be dangerous. I think actually that even knight f2, if I'm not mistaken, uh, king f2 and bishop check look rather scary because uh, there's going to be a, a queen g5 check coming. I mean, if I go to g2, for example, then queen g5 check. And I think even if I come to e3, there's queen g5 check. I'm, I'm assuming that works. But I was planning to do something like um, e3 or maybe e4, hit the knight and, um, yeah, you know, play the knight to f3, rook to g1. I mean, I've got some control of the centre, right, in return for the pawn. It's uh, it's not bad at all. So after g4, black went castles, and I played the move g5, knight e8 and h4, and off we go, really. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is quite it's quite dangerous. I mean, actually, having the pawn on b4 is quite nice. It makes it harder for black to get in, you know, uh, c5 and then d4, blocking the bishop. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to go knight f3 and h5 and g6. It's 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 quite dangerous, especially in bullet. So black played f6, and I played the move g6. Um, yeah, I mean, I could play a move like knight f3 as well, but this seemed quite tempting. The idea is to take. I'll go h5 maybe, or even e3 and bishop d3. The queen's coming in somewhere here. It's dangerous. So black played the move h6 and uh, well, OK, I mean, um, you know, that sort of uh, pr initial pressure then has been absorbed. But I've got this um, this thorn pawn on uh, on g6. It was uh, one of the things we noticed with um, Alpha Zero that um, very keen on getting a pawn like this, restricting the um, uh, the black king's movements. And uh, yeah, now it's a question about how you're going to follow it up. Um yeah, I mean, I wasn't really sure, to be honest, but I just um, ended up developing d5, knight, c3. I mean, um, if you just let me, I'll go d4 and uh, just put stuff in the center. And then, you know, I've just got this as a massive uh, nail in black's position. So black, you know, was really trying to uh, to gain some space. But obviously uh, this move. Yeah, I mean, it's weakening the light squares. So I get to push the king over to the over to the uh, corner, which is very nice. Um, yeah, maybe uh, probably uh, bishop e6 would have been uh, maybe more sensible. But I'm going bishop h3 then, you know, and uh, coming in with f knight f5. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a very dangerous position for black anyway. And then around here, I decided that I was going to um, uh, to really just go for direct mate. And I played the move d3. And the idea of d3 is to play the bishop to c1 and take on h6. And uh I wasn't completely convinced how black was going to was actually going to be able to deal with that. B takes a3, bishop c1. I think black had um, had sort of missed this was uh, happening. Certainly he spent uh, a fair amount of his uh, precious bullet time 
um, trying to work out what to do. But he came up with something quite uh, quite good. He played the move f5. And the idea there is to play the move knight f6. So I was a little bit worried all of a sudden that um, bishop h6 was going to be bet by knight f6. And I wasn't completely sure how good that was going to be. Um, I couldn't make anything like um, bishop takes g7, king g7 work. I couldn't make that really work. Um, and um, yeah, I wasn't really sure. I mean, uh, Torch actually says that queen g5 would have been uh, quite strong here. You're, you're looking to follow up with knight h5 to put pressure on g7. But I mean, there's all sorts of discovered attacks and stuff like this, and I just wasn't sure. Um, what suddenly occurred to me, and uh, in a bit of a flash somehow, sometimes, you know, your brain just works quickly, was a, a quite exquisite idea. Um, I hadn't seen all of the variations, but uh, I'd seen that most of them were leading to mate. So I sort of assumed it was going to work out. And um, um, it wasn't actually the best move at all, but it led to a hell of a finish. So I played the move knight takes f5. And... Um, well, one of the um, I wasn't 100 percent sure about Bishop F5, though it looked you know reasonably dangerous. One of the ideas being that after Knight F6, I do have the move Queen G5 here because uh, H takes G5, H G5 is going to be mate, and it looked like there could be danger. Um, in actual fact, the engines say there isn't any danger, and that I'm White's actually um, ending up quite a bit worse here. Yeah, c'est la vie. <laughs> it's, what can you say? Uh, those are just uh, those sort of uh, judgments are just uh, not. I'm not able to do to do those sort of judgments quickly. But black, um, obviously, I'm still threatening to take on h6. Still very dangerous. And I mean, after bishop f5, there's still bishop h6 that you've got to deal with. Um, the promise knight f6 is uh, is fine, and I, I just don't have any good discovered attack somehow. But um, um, but black played the move knight f6, and this enabled me to. Um, to uh, implement my um, my idea. Um, I'm quite proud of it, really, because I ended this bullet game with 20 seconds left on the clock, which means that I calculated all this in, uh, you know, less than 40 seconds in total for the whole game. So uh, I'm really pretty proud of this. You might want to stop the, uh, the video and work out um, uh, what I played here. It's uh, something like Force Mate in, uh, in seven or eight. So uh, just to give you a little clue there. The... Um, the solution is um, I play queen h6. So g takes h6 is forced and now g7. So the king's only got one move. And if you haven't spotted it yet, you might want to uh, just stop the video here and uh, spend a little bit more time trying to work out what my follow up was. It's pretty gorgeous. Actually. Yeah, I'm really, really proud of this. Knight g5 check is the follow up. So if hg I take with the h pawn and um, I end up with... Uh, uh, a checkmate here, the, the bishop covering this square, the knight's protecting this one, the bishop's protecting this pawn. I mean, you can you can see how I'm not sure I would be seeing this sort of stuff or being this confident about it, about doing stuff without the queen, if I hadn't seen so many Leela, um queen odds games. But that's not the main point of the combination. The main point is after king g6. Um, and again, you might want to stop the, uh, the video here and see what you can uh, find. The um, the main point here is that I play the move g8 queen. g8 rook would win as well, funnily enough. Um, and then black's got a few possibilities. Um, there is, if knight g8, then I play the move h5 check. King f6, knight h7 checkmate. Oh, we're just all, all deal, dealing with it. And uh, as as with the Leela queen odds games, uh, some pieces uh, blocking in the uh, the black king. Although obviously the the seven square is also covered by the uh, the white knight. Um, king h5. I hadn't actually seen that one. Um, there are multiple ways of mating, but uh, if you want to be brilliant, you'll finish it with a good old with a good old queen sacrifice there. Knight h6 checkmate. Uh, bishop covering here, and um, yeah. Knight covering the uh, f3 square, bishop covering this escape square. And perhaps the most beautiful of all, I think, this is the one that um, that I was, uh, uh, that first flashed into my mind when I had this idea. Rook g8, I play the move bishop f7, checkmate. Knight's covering, black's pieces uh, um, restricting the king and, uh, well, everything else sort of contributing towards uh, mating the black king. 
Ah, I just really like that one. It was such a, a Leela Queen odds uh, position and, uh, you know, finding mates without the Queen, basically. And uh, yeah, as I said, I, I think probably, uh, you know, looking at all those um, at all those uh, uh, Queen odds games, uh, I think it's more than nearly 100 uh, somehow of those mates I selected from, uh, I think, an initial selection of about 400, 500 positions. You know, it's uh, I think it's really, really helped. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed that. Good to show that the GM can still play a decent game from time to time. Obviously, I, I do lose quite a few bullet games, but most of them on time, just through being a little bit old and slow. But uh, these sort of games really make it worthwhile. So there we are. Thanks very much for watching and hope to see you at the next videos. Thanks for watching, everyone.